Welcome to watercolor relaxation. Today we will practice gradient wash with lychee. Lychee take me back to the summers of my childhood. My cousin and I ate the most sweet and juicy lychee from my grandparents' orchards in Taiwan. We were young, and who can put the most lychee in their mouth? Seems like the most important thing in the world. How I miss those days of innocence. For the aroma therapy, I pick vanilla. Vanilla provide a rich, warm, sweet scent, creating a comforting and relaxing atmosphere for my practice. Ancient Chinese philosophy Lao Tzu once say. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. When I let go of what I have, I receive what I need. In this practice, I hope you can let go of your own expectation and enjoy the process. Today, we will practice gradient wash. I will show you two different ways to achieve the gradient wash. One is wet on dry, and then the other one it will be wet on wet. I use the block in to determine the angle of the lychee, then finish with the contour line. On this exercise, I'm using crimson red with sap green. As you can see here, I put the crimson red on the left side and the sap green on the right. I then add a little bit of sap green into my crimson red, and as you can see here. The red become a little bit duller. I'm adding more sap green into the crimson red. As you can see, the red getting closer to the sap green, meaning adding more green. The red become duller and duller, and that will be my form shadow and cast shadow colors.
I create two circles to show you two different ways that you can watercolor the lychee. First is wet on dry. I use a very thick crimson red for my form shadow. Then I rinse my brushes and use more water to carry down the paint. The second circle is wet on wet. I use the water to wet my paper first. Then I use the crimson red to place on the form shadow. As you can see here, the crimson red is running with the water that I put it on. I then use the clean water same thing to carry down and finish the lychee. You can also use the sap green to do the core shadow for the lychee. As you can see, sap green make the crimson red much duller. After the first circle is dry, I then go in and add the sap green for the core shadow. For the composition today, we are going to use the point of concentration, meaning that um, all the objects that will go into one point here, and same thing with this, is kind of swell to one point. So everything coming one to me, uh, one point. So I will pick, um, a center, as you can see this right here, that is coming to a point. And this point is going to be on the third, meaning if you draw a line right here, it will be the third of the picture frame. And I can share with you right here very quick. If you draw a line here, and a here, and a here, and a here, so it's kind of like point to that third. So when you're doing the watercolors, you can have that picture in your mind. So if I'm doing the lychee today, I will thinking about most of lychee going to start to coming on this direction and then maybe one right here or so on. My table is tipped it, so it's kind of hard for me to show you. I maybe can try on the table. Let's see with this one. The color I use for my lychee is crimson red, cami red, Indian yellow, and then sap green. I started using the block in for my lychee. 
Again, the back of my mind is thinking the concentration point for my composition. I started to peel out the skin to show the white on the lychee. The fruits of the lychee will be part of my composition today. After finish my drawing of the composition, I then started to test out the colors that I will be using later. Again, I want to show you two different ways to watercolor lychee. One is wet on dry. First, I use the crimson red. On the other brushes, I carry in the cami red to mix them together. Because you can see that the variety of the red on the lychee is different. Then I finishing up with Indian yellow and a sap green. On the second lychee, I used the wet on wet technique. First, I use the first layer with a very light crimson red, a lot of water. Then I go in with much thicker paint for my form shadow. As you can see here, the water is mixing very well because the paper is wet. I then add the Indian yellow. As you can see, this lychee here, some part is lighter. I also use the thirsty brushes and lift up the paint. Then I place it back. I'm also using the yellow ochre 
instead of Indian yellow. Blue will be for my shadow later, so I place it here to show you that it's the ultramarine blue that I'm using. I miss the crimson red with the ultramarine blue and using the purple for my core shadow.
for the fruit of the lychee. I use the clean water and add a little bit of ultramarine blue. As you can see here, create a very nice foam shadow for the fruit of the lychee. Make sure the red is completely dry and you can start to work on the white of the lychee fruit. If it's wet, then the red is going to bleed into the fruit. So wait until the skin is dry, then you can start to work on the fruit. I mix the crimson red with the sap green so that I have a duller red for my form shadow and also cast shadow. The area that need to be darker will be the overlap lychee. I then started using the crimson red to create the texture for the lychee. For the texture of the lychee, you do not need to do every single lychee to have a texture. It is nice that to keep some lychee without textures. Pay attention to the arrangement of that spike. It had to go along with the form of the lychee.
Thank you for doing watercolor relaxation with me today. We learned the gradient wash with wet on wet and wet on dry. Letting go of your own expectation and focus on what is working at the moment. Cherish the process and not only the result. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I hope this sweet lychee can brighten your day.